Hola and bom dia from Portugal. I'm Locke and this is Shan. We are two Aussies that have just moved to Lisbon, Portugal on the D8 Digital Nomad Visa. Here in Portugal, there's a big digital nomad scene, particularly here in Lisbon. The weather here is beautiful and warm. You've got epic beaches and quality of life is just phenomenal. The D8 visa was introduced in 2023, allowing digital workers to relocate here as long as they can prove a decent income. The main benefits of being a digital nomad here in Portugal is the possibility of a Portuguese citizenship after only five years and the access to the Portuguese public health system. The process for applying for the digital nomad visa is different from Australia versus the UK and America. We're sharing our story on how we applied through Australian process. We're not going to lie, this was a bit of a stressful and confusing journey but hey six months later we're here sitting in a park in our little suburb in Lisbon <laughs> living the dream So what is a digital nomad? A digital nomad is a person who uses technology to work remotely and has the freedom to travel and live in different locations. So what are the DA visa requirements? The first thing you'll need to do is prove that you can make a means of income remotely. Editing, whether that be e-commerce, you know, drop shipping, whatever you want to do online. And the income currently is 3,040 euros a month, four times the minimum wage of a Portuguese wage. You'll need to provide bank statements or invoices to display this amount of income for three consecutive months. The next thing you'll need is proof of work and this could be a letter written by yourself or an employee. Basically a signature and approving what you're going to be doing while you're overseas. Next you'll need a NIF number which is your tax file number in Portugal. This will basically allow you to open up a bank account, it'll allow you to have a phone plan and apply for a rental. Another requirement is to open a Portuguese bank account. If you want to apply for a NIF and bank account remotely, you can use an app called Border. They open up your Portuguese bank account stress-free as well as your NIF number. We just wanted to spend the $900 and get it done right before we got here just to avoid any kind of future stress. Border allowed us to open up a joint account and they also allowed us to apply for two individual tax file numbers. Yeah, we highly recommend Border and we've left a link in the description down below. All right, a lease. Some websites say that you need a one year lease to apply for the D8 visa. It's kind of unclear whether you do or don't, but obviously once you get here, you have to live somewhere anyway. So we found a few different third party sort of websites that do it all for you. These websites are Uni Places, Roomless, Spot a Home, Rentola. Uni Places was the most practical for us. It does have quite a big service fee, but it comes with a actual certificate for your visa. So it states where you're living, you get the contact for your landlord. We've been really happy with it so far and we've had really good communication with our landlord. It's kind of like Airbnb, but for long term, but you need to find something for one year. We didn't really have the luxury of just flying over to Portugal the whole, what, 30 hours just to look for a place and then pay for rent for six months and do all that. So this is definitely a visa life hack that we found. Also, we attached a cover letter each to our application. So our cover letter was pretty basic, but just stating why we want to move to Portugal and it, like our intentions of living there. The D8 visa is a two year visa. So obviously you want sort of really serious reasons of moving there. It's pretty much just compliment the country, why you want to move here, where you want to move to and provide that you're going to be stable and give back to the economy more or less. Yeah, don't make it too long. They want it short and sweet. You also need flights to Portugal, so just printing off your flight itinerary and just sending it off in your application form. Up next, you'll need travel medical insurance. So we went with a company called Safety Wing and they are about 45 American US dollars a month. We chose the monthly option because after four months we will become residents and we won't need it anymore. Therefore, it's easier to kind of cancel. Once again, the link is in the description. So you'll also need a police check. When we got ours done, it was super easy. Probably took us no longer than half an hour. 
now. Next, you'll need ID photos. You can get that done at the post office, which will cost you no more than $10, $15. We also attached two of our last tax assessment notices, and this is just to prove our Australian residency uh, to the Portugal Embassy. Now for the fun part, the whole consulate experience. So we applied for our visas digitally, but we don't live near any of the consulates in Australia. So great for us, we could do it all online. The experience was actually a lot smoother than we were expecting. Once we got all of our documents together, all the things that we've stated previously, we went on to the consulate website. There's a specific link to the visa application process and we filled out an online form. That's pretty much just all of your basic identification and questions. And then you go to attach all of those documents you had electronically. Send that off and then print it. Once it's printed, you're going to then attach it to the big pile of documents that you've printed off. So all the ones that you just submitted electronically, they'll send you the details of address once you've applied online. We sent that off an express post and within a few days, we both had emails from a representative from the consulate stating that they'd received our documents, which is an awesome indicator because it means that they're reviewing it fast and they've already looked at what we have and they just wanted one more document from Lockie and all good, he just sent it straight through. After that, it was a 60 day processing time. Let the two months run its course because we tried to message them as we went, like what's the update? They don't really want a bar of it. I'm sure they would have emailed us if we left it a bit longer, but right on 60 days, we called them. They said, yep, they're all approved. Send us your passports. We jumped in the car, sent our passports straight down to the post office and put them in an express post folder with an also a return parcel. So we bought two, sent it down there. And then within a week, we'd received our passports all the way back with our beautiful little e-visa visa that's valid for four months. It states on the visa, you are allowed two entries into the country. So obviously the entry that actually gets you into the country and then say you want to do a little holiday within those four months. When we received our our passports back we also got a letter stating that they had booked us an appointment for the SEF here in Lisbon for us already which was in a few months time and so that appointment then is to go from our temporary stay visa to a actual digital nomad visa and where we gain residency and once we gain residency we have access to the public health we can stay for two years pretty much <laughs> so all those documents we have we printed another copy and we've brought them over to Portugal with us and we will take those documents to our SEF appointment in four months to gain our residency that's our little experience of gaining a digital nomad visa here in Portugal. People from Australia don't have fear. It did work for us. Once you get here, you can just pinch yourself that it's worked. Thanks for coming. See you in Portugal. Stay tuned for that. No, don't stay tuned for that. That's fucking weird. Uh, hold up. <laughs> stay tuned for it. It's already there. We've left the description in the below. Because <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I looked at you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We went with a company called Travel Wing. No, we didn't. It's Safety Wing for fuck's sake. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we did it. Did it, babe? <laughs>